Yeah, we're live. <laughs> I'm almost an hour late, 58 minutes. But we'll do what we can for tonight. Tonight, we're going to talk about the, uh, I have a photo up, the thumbnail. I'm going to show you that in just a little bit. Um, it is the 462 valve uh, adjustable intake that I made. And in this case, it was one that I did. <laughs> when you see it, you'll see all the extra supports that I had to put in there to make it work with a turbo because apparently when you put a adjustable intake manifold with slip fit tubing and use tape, it's got to be secured in place. Otherwise it's not going to take very much boost, <laughs> but you know, you gotta, you gotta do what you gotta do. I, I wasn't going to have somebody weld it together so that the problem with that is I would have, it, it would no longer have been adjustable if we would have welded it together and especially if we would have, you know, seam welded the tubes in, in this length. So the nice thing about this intake manifold, if we take a look at it, is that I had the, basically this was a aluminum lower intake manifold. I'm thinking that this was from, this was probably from the truck uh, manifold. And in which case, could have even been from a 351 truck, although I think it had to cross over. So I think it was a, I mean, a, not a 351, a 54 instead of a 46. But at any rate, we I was able to weld the tubing onto this. And then what, what we could do is because the tubing was swedge fit, we could stack whatever we wanted on this. Now for this particular application, we were trying to make a thousand horsepower with the two valve, which we ended up doing. <coughs> but once you see the, in fact, we can take a look at that right now, I guess. Uh, but see, so <laughs> we can do a lot of things here. So we have uh, an excessive amount of tape here securing the connection between the plenum and the runners because inside the plenum we have, uh, this is all welded to the base of the plenum. And then we have a full radius air horn for each one of the cylinders in there. And then what happens is, the the small section of tubing sticking out of each one of uh, the bottom of for each one of the runners the bottom of the plenum just slides into these um swedged openings and so it all just pushes together but what we've done is taken a bunch of tape and taped it up so that it's you know sealed same thing up here this thing um under boost wants to separate so what we had to do is we, I had uh, provisions for injector bungs. I, I basically welded injector bungs up here. So we had provisions for injectors going up to the top of the plenum, but we had to seal all those. And what, what else would you seal them with except for more duct tape? And then I ran a cross brace <laughs> across. Um, the other thing that's helping to hold them together, which also worked fairly well, is on the back, it's kind of hard to see, but there is a plenum connection connecting both of these plenums together. It's basically a U-shaped with a coupler in the middle of them, and then they're joined together with hose clamps. And then obviously also adding strength to the front side of this is the fact that we have our air-to-air -air intercooler because we've got twin 57 millimeter turbos. We've got our air-to-air -air intercooler. This, is, this stuff is all from HP Performance. And then we have our two-in, two-out air-to-air intercooler which by the way, I still have. <laughs> so if anybody wants to duplicate this, um, but we have our two tubes going into one. And then obviously that all clamped together helps provide more structure for it. We've got our, uh, I'm thinking that these were 160 pound injectors. Probably they might've been the Ford, Ford racing deals. But this combination worked fairly well. I mean, the, because we had enough turbo on it, you know, turbos. We had run those turbos previously on a 464 valve on a modified 03 Cobra motor. It did fairly well. But it, it this would have been better but had we done a number of things with it. This would have been better if we would have run... Um, go ahead and fix my camera here. This would have been better if we were, would have run E85. It would have been better... If we would have had an air to water intercooler instead of the air to air, the air to air worked okay. David Visard, what's going on? Everybody say hi to David. And as I as I tell you very often, if you haven't been over to see his stuff, please go see his uh, check out. I mean, because he has, you know, if you, a lot of times I'll get questions about porting and things that I, 
I, I'm not a Porian guy, but luckily he is. So if you guys have questions, um, he, he obviously is the guy to get the answers for. So make sure that you go see his stuff and everybody say hi to Dave because he's awesome. But on this deal, uh, the cool thing was on the manifold allowed me to adjust the runner length. We could dial in the RPM range that we wanted the motor to, to make power in with the other things that we had done to it, ported heads and, and camshafts. And then the, the nice thing is you on these turbo motors like this, you can miss by a lot. <laughs> on camshaft, you can miss by a lot on the cylinder head. And if you're making a certain amount of power, because this is how I look at it, you know, if we if we make 500, we can make 1,000 at 14.7 pounds. If we only make 400, it just means that we can still get to 1,000. It just takes more boost to get there because we're starting out at a lower NA power output. So higher pressure ratio and, and we're there. Again, all of this is assuming that we have the turbos that can supply that kind of power. And we had turbos that could easily make 1,000 horsepower. So it's not really... Um, uh, terribly big deal once I got my intake manifold basically all taped together because sometimes on the dyno you gotta just you know it's all it's all bailing wire and duct tape at least a lot of my stuff is and and uh we had you'll notice we had two throttle bodies on it so I had to rig up a drive-by wire super richie drive-by wire throttle body so we had both of them uh I think on this one we ran them together into a, on either side of a um like a little uh, little roller, and then we ran them back to a, a throttle lever back in the back, and so we could pull them. And really, for what we were doing, they don't have to open up exactly the same. All they have to do both is, as long as they both get to wide open throttle for the pull, it's all okay. You know, we're not we're not doing drivability, we're not doing throttle response, we're not doing any of that stuff. We just get to wide open throttle and let it work. And I did the same thing with a lot of the other dual throttle body manifolds like the Edelbrock one and the Holly, um, you know, LS cross Rammy thing that we tried. And, and that's sometimes necessary. A lot of those like the Edelbrock one were designed to run with drive by wire throttle bodies with electronic throttle bodies, excuse me, with a splitter. And I didn't do that. <laughs> I ran, I ran mechanical ones. <clears throat> so, you know, that's what happens. But the cool thing about this and, and where I'm going with all this is it, if you look at this, is this is obviously a 4.6 liter V8, but the only thing that stops this manifold from being a 6.8 liter V10 manifold is just another set of runners. So that's not going to be hard to do. Um, we might have to just cut and section. I can't remember on the V10. I haven't looked at them in detail, but on the, on the V10, I can't remember if we have to cut out one of the intermediate ones and slide the back section back or the front section or whatever we have to do. But it's just another set of them. In fact, they don't even really have to be attached to the others as long as they're as long as there are bolt holes securing it. Now we probably will weld it and secure them together, but it'll be fairly easy. And it'll be the same thing. It's just a, a, a section of the lower intake manifold with a this section of tubing welded to it and a slip fit. And then the, the plenum we can extend in the same way. It's just, you know, cut, <laughs> separate them, slide in a new piece in the middle, <laughs> weld it and really kind of away you go. And it, and it will certainly be more than strong enough for any kind of thing that we'd be doing on a, on a 6.8 liter V10. Cause it would just be cool to have a 6.8 liter V10 just actually run and, and obviously run with <laughs> run run with the turbos on it. So because and and then not just run with turbos because we could do that on a stock one, and just blow through the stock intake manifold. But who wants to do that? You want to do something that's kind of fun, <laughs> right? That's why we're all here. But let's see why David Vise right here. <laughs> yeah, I'm 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 glad he's here. He's you know David's a good guy, super sharp. So if you guys, uh, I don't know if he's still around. If he is, um, I, David, you're obviously always welcome here. And I try to tell people to go over your, watch your stuff as much as I can. And obviously you should. And I go over there all the time. I'm subscribed. <laughs> I like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff uh, on David's stuff. So that you guys should all do that too. And I, I'm sure most of the guys here probably are well aware of, aware of David. And and because his name gets brought up a lot, especially when we're talking about camshafts, his, his camshaft theory gets brought up a lot. Um, or, or not theory, the formula gets brought up a lot. So obviously there are lots of guys here who are going to see him. I'm lost in these topics. I don't do forwards, Randy, but the 
what we're talking about in terms of making these manifolds and making them work and adjusting them for different RPM ranges. It works with any motor. It works with any Ford, Chevy, Dodge. It doesn't matter. Import, domestic. Let's see. I'm going to scroll down, scroll in, scroll in, scroll in. I have a six liter buying a turbo, 99 single cab, turbo 400, manual valve body and brake. Not sure on what size turbo to buy. would like to make 800 and have room for the future. Injectors. You need big injectors, 80s or bigger. Uh, an S475 or VS Racing 7875 is a good turbo to be near 1,000 horsepower. It'll be good at 800. It will be good. That that one that I'm showing was, was the 1,000 horsepower two-valve. Australia's in the house. He talks about the waggy finger video a lot. <laughs> is that the, is that's the one that John Causey did? <clears throat> Essential to use brake and oil in a new motor. I always do, and and especially if you have um, a flat tap at cam, then we use a high zinc brake and oil. Otherwise. I don't think it's necessary. Oh, and speaking of V10, Bart's in the house too. I need to come over to Riverside soon. Should I bring the V10? That would be cool. Bart has a V10. In fact, it's hooked to a transmission because it was in running around in a Mustang. He has a V10 that was in a Mustang running around. Yeah, I sh I've showed you guys photos of it before. And so that's one that we could run on there. And he even has a Super Bart intake manifold, uh, a custom shorter runner manifold that he did so that it would all fit under the hood and stuff. And I, he, he did some chassis dyno testing on it too, which would be very, very cool. And it, and it is a, that, that is a two valve, right? It is a two valve, that's right. Topic I'd like to talk about, got to work. Yep, Julius is out. Peace. We won't be here too late. I'm only going to be here till 8.30 tonight. I know. I got here late. I have to leave early. <laughs> That's part of the deal. Today, I took the um, the my two little golden retriever puppies. Uh, they're not so little anymore. They're five months, but they're still little puppies. But um, they did their first uh, first official swim today. So they, we took them over to the pool and let them swim. So they, it was awesome. Yeah, Randy, it is it is late. Normally I start at seven, but this was this was later than that. This was almost eight. The Continental four six intake manifold is a strange piece. Seems like a dual runner B head manifold that goes to a C head. I've seen those bundle of snake ones. Is there any downside to a board and stroke 5.3 modular two valve? Can you get to a 5.3 displacement with those? Um, seems like it'd be pretty thin. I don't know how much wall thickness is there. Five fours are $250 in every junkyard. Versus a two thousand dollar five three, who, wh who would spend two thousand dollars on a five three? Are you talking about a five three LS? The five three LSs and the five four uh, modular motors are exactly the same price in the, in the yards that I go to. In fact, all the V eights. I think. I think probably even the. I don't know if the big blocks are are, are price higher. I think it means a Ford 5.3 stroke. Oh, okay. Yeah, may, maybe that's right. <laughs> I was thinking, I immediately think LS. But yeah, a, a stroker a two valve would be expensive. That would not be the way that I would go. I would definitely go boost on that. I've built five liter strokers um, for two valves, but that that's not what I would do. I, I would definitely 
keep it at a, a four six displacement or near there, and then you know ported heads and cams, and then and then boost. It's just it, it, you can make a lot more power. <laughs> My brain went five three GM two. It's just so common that, and you don't I, I don't ever associate a five three displacement with a modular four. Who do I talk to for forged aluminum for a for a five point eight liter Windsor with a stock three fifty stroke? Uh, do you mean? Are you asking about who to talk to about pistons for a three fifty one Windsor? That there's lots of people. The JE has them. CP um, Scat has them. All of the piston manufacturers should have 351 uh, pistons available for it. <laughs> yeah, that's right, Randy. You'd sell all your 5.3 junkyard LM7s for 2000 bucks, right? Do you have any information on tuning older 80s, 90s EFI systems for more performance? Not factory stuff, because I don't do any of that. Um, all I can say is if you have access to tuning it, if you can actually change things, then you you have to run it and see where the timing is and see where the air fuel is, and then you adjust it accordingly. If it's 10 to 1, you're going to want to lean it out. If it's 15 to 1, you're going to want to richen it up. And then you try different timing levels, um, depending on what motor it is that you're talking about. You know, if it's at 20 degrees, let's try 22 or 24 degrees and see if it likes that. And then you keep doing that until it stops liking it. Yeah, mighty. There's there's lots of piston manufacturers for the for the 351 Windsor stuff. Uh, are you affordable for a rebuild? Is that, are you talking to somebody else or to me? Because I don't I don't have a shop and I don't build engines. I, I don't build engines for people. <laughs> Small by 400 for torque for torque and a four by four. Full stock bottom end, two bolt main. What cam and top end would be the right direction for 2,000 out the 6,000? That's a really broad power band. So you're not going to have something that actually does that. But a 400 inch motor for a four wheel drive, probably like a, uh, I don't know about that budget, um, like a skip white aluminum head, maybe. And then a, you can probably find some cheap cams, but something that's going to be like, uh, I don't know, 224 to 228 intake duration at 50 is probably going to work pretty well for that. In California, is E85 regularly available at the pump? It, it certainly is down at West Tech where I do the testing. It's just right around the corner, and, there, and it's available at a lot of pumps. Looked at pistons on Summit and just had issues. Had an issue, so that's why I asked. Summit should have should list a ton of um, three fifty one Windsor five point eight liter Windsor pistons. Uh, band, so you're um, going to modify the. It, I think that, that that particular intake manifold, that aviator, is it an aviator? Yeah, that aviator intake manifold would benefit from a bigger throttle body, especially if you're going to modify the motor. On a stock one, I don't think you're going to see much, but on a modified one, you might see something. I love the fact that E85 is available from the gas stations right around the corner from West Tech. Because it, you know, it, that's basically the race fuel. <laughs> it works out really well. Although, you know, just like everything that's good, it can't last forever. I'm sure, I'm sure that, uh, you know, if it's working out really well and we want to use it a lot, then that's a reason to take it away. Tim, what's going on? Princess Pancake? When my friend has a 95 Lightning engine rebuilt last year, he had no trouble getting a set of pistons. Yeah, there, there should be lots of... I mean, it's a common bore size and stuff and, and a common um, pin height.
I have a different YouTube channel telling me running high compression on low octane pump gas, you can get max power. So you want to run a high static compression and low octane. First of all, octane doesn't change the power. So if you run, if you have like, let's say you have a 10 to one motor and you run, if you could run 87 on it without it detonating and you run 87 and 89 and 91 and 93 and you saw any power change at all, it was from something else. It's, it's not going to change the power. Octane has almost no effect on power. Other things from the fuel can. A lot of guys think that octane determines burn rate and it doesn't. That's that's another falsehood. That's an, an, another inaccurate statement. Um, and then the problem, though, there is if you try to run high, I'm assuming static compression with low octane, then you get into detonation. And then to cure that, depending on what your camshaft is, depending on your dynamic compression, to cure that, you have to take timing away or change the air temperature <laughs> or change, change the compression. So uh, high compression and low octane is not a good combination. How consistent is pump E85? I don't know. I don't, when I run E85 on all the turbo things that I've ever run it on and all the, we've run it on some NA things too, but uh, it doesn't seem to do very much with certain exceptions on NA stuff, but I never even measure it. I, I just run it. It's just E85 and it's more than enough for what we're doing. Turbocharged Terminator Cobra engine. I, the, those videos are already up. That's That was done back in 2003 or four, <laughs> back when those motors were running around. Uh, I've run lots of turbo stuff on those. In fact, the video that I have up is that motor with a small uh, cam upgrade, we went the 262 comp cams, and then I ran the factory roots blower, a Kenny Bell twin screw, a Vortec or Paxton centrifugal, and two turbos, all at the same boost, same air fuel, same timing. So you can see what all of those do. So there's there's no end of of turbocharged Cobra madness out there. I see local guys use high ram lids on the aviator lowers. I'd be curious to see if that did anything. I, I think that the only thing that that would do is allow you to put a bigger throttle body on it. Any L78 news? The heads are fixed, so I can put that back together. Yeah, Randy, you, if somebody's telling you that, you shouldn't. You shouldn't be talking to that person. <laughs> you shouldn't be getting advice from them. The only way that you can make 13 to 1 static compression work is if you run a really, really big camshaft in it. That you might be able to get that to work is to run a really, really big camshaft in it. Uh, you have GT40 heads with 205 valves in them. That seems awful big for that head. Uh, you have a Holly double pumper. Well, there's no way for me to guess on horsepower because none of the stuff that you told me really dictates horsepower except for the GT40 heads. And did, were they ported? I don't know what cam is in it. I don't know what intake manifold is in it. So otherwise, there, there's, it's, I mean, it'd just be a guess, just like you could guess too, and everybody else here could guess. But since we don't know any of the of the variables, it would be hard to, it, it just would be a pie in the sky kind of guess. I was thinking about more of the information on tricking old EFI systems to work with boosts like late 80s, five liter with EFI and adding boosts, things like rising rate regulators and tricking the stock stuff. Yeah, I've been through all of that with the Honda stuff. Um, the Apex, little Apex deals where you're tricking, you're doing sensor manipulation 
on the five liter stuff, we went through all the FMUs and then we did the boost timing retards on them. So you could do that stuff too. Any plans on bringing back the Magnum? Yeah, the Magnum is another motor that needs to run again. Uh, Jeremy, if you have 10 to 1, E85 for 14 pounds, a boost is needed. I don't, is that a question? Stock cam is 5, 4 PSI on a 5, 4, 3 valve safe. Yeah, but I don't know what the, I don't understand the cam. <coughs> yeah, we, we've run a lot more boost than that on a stock 5.3, if that's your question. Coyote motors are 11 to 1 factory made to run on pump gas. Yeah, a, a four valve motor is a different thing. It's an aluminum headed motor and it relies heavily on factory knock sensors. And it's an NA motor. Uh, 302 GT40 heads, larger injectors. Fast system, EVK short headers, X pipe, flow masters, Paxton supercharger. Uh, there'd be no way for me to guess um, power on that either, because I don't know what there. I don't know what intake you have on there. I don't know what camshaft you have on there. I don't know how much boost you're running. Uh, so again, I, there would be no way to know. If I had all that stuff, I would have a pretty good idea. Mike, I'm trying to scroll back and see what. And naturally, I can't find your thing. So I don't know what your, I don't know what cam you're asking about, what stock cam you're asking about replacing. Oh, there we go. Oh, stock cam, four PSI. I don't, I don't know. I don't really have any recommendations on the three valve stuff. I've never run three valve cam testing with the factory variable cam thing working. Cause when we did the testing way back, we didn't have a way on the engine dyno cause we were running an, uh, a standalone management system and it couldn't run the factory uh, variable cam timing. So I don't have any real cam testing for you. That motor makes pretty good power stock, like the way that we run it on an engine dyno. And again, with no variable cam, uh, it makes like 350 or something. Um, and so, you know, making 700 is pretty easy with boost, even with just stock cams in it. With high static compression and big cams, it essentially lets some of the compression run out of the exhaust. No, that's not what's happening. It's not bleeding it out. Four point six ported PI heads or aftermarket heads. Which would you recommend? Well, since there's only one set of aftermarket heads, it's a trick flow head, and a trick flow head will make more power than a ported PI head will. And then a ported trick flow head will make even more. The, that's not the question. The question is how much money do you want to spend? And I think that the port, the trick flow head, I don't know this for certain. I'd have to ask Brian. I don't know if it has a thicker deck than the, um, than the stock 462 valve heads. I haven't ever pushed one where we've run into deck thickness issues, but that's, that's always something to consider when we're talking about the LS stuff. Can't a big cam get close to 100% VE? You can get beyond 100% VE. I've seen the videos. I'm just thinking of modifying the intake, and I was given I was given for a bigger throttle by I'm just talking about running it, testing it on my personal engine. If it's a turbocharged combination and you're blowing through the throttle body, 
the gains that you get would be much less than than running at NA. Planning on doing a different intake testing with the L78? I don't think so. Um, what other than the factory intake would would I run on the L the L78? Really, is just the <coughs> a reproduction motor. How rare are the Pontiac Rammer threes? Not terribly. Uh, a Rammer four would be more desirable, but it is a good motor and. And, and what you do with it, obviously, is going to be a personal thing. It's not a, it's not like it's a camera forward or like a ZL1 or an L88. It's not that kind of thing. So I, I, I don't think you should worry about leaving it stock. Let's see. Try and scroll back and see. No, I'm not seeing any other comments. So we'll get rid of any sort of political nonsense. What brand of throttle body do you like the best for what kind of motor? For a five liter Ford, the throttle body or the AccuFab stuff is probably the best. Um, for the LS, the the um, we use a lot of the of the fast stuff only because when we go to a bigger intake manifold, we have a a fast 102, but I've also used the Holly 105s a lot. Find a single overhead cam Pontiac. Yeah. Yeah, I I was going to, I got together with um, Liz on one of those. I was going to get one. She had one that she took out that was injured and we were going to try to make it work. Uh, Mike, I'm not seeing. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, you have a stock camshaft in that thing. It's not going to make too much power then. Um, So it has a good intake manifold on it. It has it had some kind of cylinder head on it too, right? Oh, GZ40 heads. Yeah, it would have to have larger injectors. GT40 head in a stock cam is still not going to be very much. 280, it's like going to be like 300 or low 300s, maybe. I don't even think it was that much with a GT40 intake manifold on there. Let's see. I'm going to do some, some research. And we're looking, and we're looking, and we're looking. Okay. So more than likely with a stock cam, GT40 heads, that intake manifold, I'm thinking you're going to be 
in the very low 300s of the flywheel. And so, for, you know, I don't know, low, low 400s probably with a supercharger on it. Well, one cool engine should test as a Lincoln uh, LS, the V8, the four liter deal with 3.9 liter. What's the best budget build turbo for? Are you asking what the best turbo is or what the best build is? For turbos, the GT40 for 700 horsepower, so is hard to beat. Uh, metal, you have you want boost to come on at 2,000 RPM. So, what size motor is it, and all that stuff, and what are you doing with it? Other than making the thing probably detonation prone and you're going to be limiting power up top too if you have the turbo come on at 2000 rpm uh you have a vortex 57 gonna make a 383 it's gonna it's gonna want more head flow so larger valves <coughs> are a possibility you're going to have to do other machining on the head anyway to put valve springs in those. I'm hoping that you're going to put a valve, put some kind of camshaft in it. Richard, what do you know about the Nissan 4.8 or 6 cylinder? I, I have only seen stuff on YouTube about them. I, I don't know that I've ever even seen one in person. Get a positive displacement blower for boost at 2,000 RPM. Boost at 2,000 RPM obviously is a possibility. You look at the factory stuff, it does that easily, but it does it with really tiny turbos though. And, and again, unless you're really, really good at tuning, having boost there can be problematic. And since you, like, where is the stall speed if this is an automatic? Looking for low RPM and mid-range torque. Yeah, as long as you're not, you know, you, you can size turbos to come in early and be responsive. Current converter is stalling at 2,000 to 2,200. It'll be higher than that if you, if you add, if you change torque production by 50% with a turbo, which should not be hard, even at 2,000 RPM, or, or it's not like it's going to be 2,500 to me. Um, the stall speed of the converters is going to, is going to be higher than. Uh, handy, you most guys that do two valves with trick flow heads also do cams. And you can do, I don't know, I don't know what kind of RPM range you want to run. I don't know how much power you want to make. I don't know about any of that stuff. Um, an intake manifold goes a long way. My six liter truck is in boost by 2000. The Q trim 72 millimeter. Well, French, you haven't been here for a while. Welcome back. Uh, barbecue Mike, the the cam that I recommend almost for all of those is that Comp uh, Extreme Energy 274. But any camshaft that you put in is going to be a you know 30 or 40 horsepower gain, and and well probably more than that under boost. But that that Extreme Energy cam works really well. Extreme Energy 274. Starting a project on a 464 valve Lincoln. What what year is it? I, I wrote a book on modular Ford, so if it's a it's a four valve modular Ford, I know a fair bit about them. 
Yeah, James, I, I'm with you. I, I, I think people don't don't understand what that is. My my wife's Mercedes has boost at 2,000 RPM and has lots, um, and you can do that, but it has a fairly fairly sophisticated engine management system on it, and it has a, a really small turbo and you know, it has a lot of things that the average motor doesn't have. Blue collar's out. The Triton V10 comes on at 2,000 RPM. <laughs> yeah, big, big motors will do that. 96 Lincoln. I was wondering if I could put a 96 to 98 Cobra on it. I think that that's a B head in that Lincoln, right? Um, is it, do you have any hood clearance issues or any of that stuff? I didn't think there was an aftermarket intake manifold for the 462 valve. Yeah, there are. There's a lot. There are a lot of them. Uh, let's see. Yeah, lots of lots of intake manifolds. Two more minutes. I didn't even do a man. I didn't even do a poll. We need a poll for tonight. Uh, is there any problem building a 383 small Chevy with 5.7 rods? You need to look and make sure that the 383 kit that you would get is designed for 5.7 rods. Okay, Andrew, yours will be the last one. Gents, I bought a CJ5 Jeep. Had a stock 400 small block in it. I pulled it out and put a Dart Pro on 215 head. Those are good. Uh, 215, 230 roller cam. Port match the dual plane. <laughs> I think the combo is okay. Yeah, that will work good. That's a mild camshaft. You have more than enough cylinder head for that, and you could go up in camshaft later on if you wanted to. A dual plane is the perfect one. If port batching it makes you feel better, that's great. Um, and, and as long as the carburetor is tuned right and the distributor is has the right kind of curve on it, that should run really, really good. Because it's a 400 and it has, you know, it has all the things that it needs. And on that note, it is time to go. Uh, I will be on time, <laughs> I promise, tomorrow. And I'll also have another video up tomorrow. And I'm trying to get going on uh, getting this L78 stuff done. And I want to bring that 350 Pontiac down too and make a few pulls on that thing. Although the Trophy 4-cylinder is there and ready to go so I can do some testing on that. So lots of stuff to do. But I will see you guys all tomorrow. Bam, 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 bam,